How you doing everyone? It's Kevin. I'm back with another video. We have the compound miter saw. I had picked it up a little while back and we've been using it in the barn dominium. Uh, the only thing is with this saw, it's very heavy and I really don't have enough saw horses or stands to stick it on. If you had it built into a table, it'd be great, but I don't have that room in this shop. So I went and picked up a rolling miter saw stand you know, by DeWalt. So we're going to get to putting this uh, rolling miter saw stand together. So we're going to get it opened up. I don't know how much we got to put together, but we'll get her done. Well, it looks to me like we got a lot to put together. So we're going to get the instructions out, although I don't know if us guys should do that. We're going to find the instructions, and we're going to get to put this bad boy together. Let me get this stuff out, laid out, so we can see what we got and find them instructions. When you first open up your box, you kind of look at it and you're thinking, man, this is a lot to put together. But once I got it all laid out, it's not really that bad, and I don't think it will have a rough time doing it at all. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I just laid everything out so we could see what we have to put on the table. Uh, one thing I want to tell you before you get started, uh, make sure you do not cut the two straps on this piece here. Uh, I did have to cut two straps to get this stuff apart. But we don't want to cut the two straps that are on our stand itself. We don't want to cut the two straps on this. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is make sure we have a good Allen wrench to put this thing together. This is a 5 millimeter Allen wrench. It's going to fit the heads of all these Allen bolts that we're going to need to put in. Now, they don't give you one with your... They don't give you the tool. You're going to have to find in your bolts you'll see a curved washer it's gonna look like that it's curved and then you're gonna see four of these eight millimeter bolts in your little bag of bolts and you're gonna need two of the curved washers you can see how that is curved so let's get these we got two of them and we're going to go ahead and get this end piece right here put on. So all we're going to do is bring it up here and slide it into place. Now you might have to, you know, move it in a little bit or whatever. It's not a big deal. So go ahead, once you have this slid in, slide your curved washer down on there. Go ahead and stick your bolt down in there and try to get it started. Sometimes these could be a booger to get started, but don't, don't worry, you'll get them. Just take your time. Use your fingers to get it in there a little bit. Turn it just a couple turns so you know it's locked into place. It's still loose. Then come over to your other one. Line it up. Do the same thing. Use your hand, fingers. And get it started. You might have to move it around a little bit. That's why we don't tighten that one. Then go ahead and tighten this one down. Now at this point, since we have both of them in, we can go ahead and tighten these two bolts down. So we're going to go ahead and snug them up. These little T-wrenches are really good for this. Because they allow you to get a little bit of leverage on them to get them tightened down. Okay, okay for our next step, we're going to be putting this little handle on. You're going to go through your little bag of bolts, find the one with a little bit of blue Loctite on it, and get you a lock washer. So we're going to go ahead and put this guy up here, and we're going to get it started in. You're going to screw it right through the back of the handle. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, for our next step, we're going to find two more of those bent washers. You see they're bent. We're going to find two of them and your two short bolts. These are going to be the same bolts we used in the last, in the back part. 
and then we're going to need this piece here. So we're going to go ahead and mount this one on the same way we did the other one. The only thing with this one here, we're going to have to pick the back of this up and slide these in. Take a bent washer, stick it on here, and start your bolt with your fingers. Sometimes these bolts can be a little tricky getting in because I think they paint the threads. So you want to both you have them both put in, go ahead and tighten these guys down. It's starting to come together. Alright, for our next step, we're going to be mounting the wheels on. Uh, look in your box of parts you're gonna find this piece right here you're gonna have a washer a spacer another washer and a lock nut so we're gonna go ahead and leave one washer and one spacer on the bolt slide it through the outside of our wheel this is the inside this is the outside slide it through like so you'll see your spacer stick out just a little bit on that side slide it through here Go ahead, put your washer on, and your lock nut. Now for this part here, you're going to need an 18 millimeter wrench and a 19 millimeter wrench. Put your 18 on the outside, your 19 millimeter on the inside, and go ahead and tighten this up. You want these pretty snug. You don't want to break them, but you want them pretty snug. You want to make sure your wheel still spins. So repeat the process on the other side. Take the lock nut off in the washer, just like so. Slide it through the outside, through, leave the spacer, you can see it sticking out a little bit, slide it on, tighten it down. So on to the next step. Okay, we're going to flip this over the way it should be. And set it down. Okay, our next step is going to be loosening all six of these rail uh, bolts, and these here we're going to take out the bolts that the, the tool bolts. So we'll go ahead with any one of them. We're just going to loosen them up. So now our rail will slide. This rail slides. We're going to pull these pull bolts out don't forget it has a washer on it don't lose them we'll set them off to the side at this point things are just a little bit sloppy moving around but you'll be fine Now we have both of our rails loose, we're going to get ready to set our miter saw up on there. What I'm going to do now is center this saw up on this uh, table and we're going to take the bolts that we took out earlier with the washers and slide them down through. Now you might have to reach underneath and slide that little bolt. You'll see it. It's inside that track. Slide it over and put your bolt down in. You're going to do that to all of them. We're not going to actually tighten them down just yet because we want to make sure this thing's centered up on the stand real well. I'm slide my track out. Find my little, I can, you can hear it underneath there. I'm going to slide it over, push your finger up in there a little bit, 
slide it over, look down through this hole, and go ahead and slide one of your bolts with the washer down in there. And just use your fingers to tighten it. Not Nothing else yet. We're going to leave them a little loose. What I'm doing is looking to make sure my saw is setting in the center that way and setting in the center this way. So now I think I have it all centered up where I want it. We're going to go ahead and start tightening all them bolts down. There's going to be six rail bolts and four tool bolts. I know I said we would tighten up all the bolts, but we will not tighten up all the bolts. We're going to tighten up the four corners on the rail bolts. We're going to tighten these four. The reason why is because the saw covers the center one. I won't be able to tighten it because the saw is sitting on there. So we'll have to move the saw and tighten the bolts underneath of it. I think I can get to the back one, but I can't get to the center one in the front. So if we tighten these, these four here on the corners, then the track should stay where it's at. I just moved that over to the side so I can get these center bolts tight. Now we'll slide the machine back over the tool, line it back up. And go ahead and put the other bolts back in. Now I'm just looking over my machine to make sure it looks the same on both sides and we don't have to worry about the up back and forth because we bolted down the track. So let's go ahead and tighten the tool down now. We can do all four bolts on the tool. All right. Now our tool is securely put on the table. All right, since we got our tool on the, the uh, table, we can go ahead and cut the two white straps on each side. Now these are a little bit tough to cut. I got a set of side snips. I will just nip at it until I can get it cut off. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and raise it by pushing down. Pull up. This, this compound miter saw is very heavy. It's a very heavy tool. That's the reason why I wanted this stand. So now we're going to go ahead and put our arms on the outside of this. Okay, we don't have many more parts to go. We're almost there. So now we're going to get this piece here. And as you can see, it looks like it's sharpened. It looks sharpened. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece just like so. With this piece pointing down, we're going to slide it in this hole. Now it has a lock in there. keeps that from coming out, so you can't pull this out now. So you want to make sure that you do this right. You want this piece down and you want that pointy thing in. So we're going to go down here. We're going to grab this piece. We have one of these. And then we have this piece here, which is going to slide down in just like so. And then this piece is going to go right on the outside of here. That side is done, now we'll go to the other side. 
We're going to take our piece, just like so, this piece hanging down. We're going to slide it in. Now it's locked. Grab your other piece, your last piece. I'm going to put it on. Now we'll be able to raise this to the height we need. Any height, whatever board's coming off of there. Okay, when we did the first steps, we put this handle on. We put one bolt in the back of the handle. There is one more bolt that has to go in there. I didn't see it. I thought it was the same one, and it's not. It goes right in this side. And I seen that I had one bolt left in my bag, so I went back through every one of the steps and made sure that I got, ooh, make sure that I got this bolt into place. Okay, this is the bolt I just put in. I thought maybe the camera was blurry, but I want to make sure you knew that you had a bolt that went inside this handle, plus this bolt on the outside. Well, a happy day for Kevin. I don't have to work on the floor no more, and I can put a pretty good size board in this, uh, on the table and on the saw now. I can get it nice and level. It's sure going to be nice not having to work off the floor. I really hated doing that. This is going to be a lot easier on my back. The stand is very, very heavy. Uh, it's very good construction. Everything I see on this thing looks really good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. If you guys are interested in this table, uh, you can pick it up on Amazon. If I'll leave the saw and the table on Amazon if you guys are interested in uh, Pick it up. You know, if you're going to be doing a lot of cutting wood, like we have the sawmill now, the sawmill, we get all the wood we want. We're able to cut it, uh, and this is going to be nice because now we can do some pretty awesome stuff with wood. So, uh, I hope this video helped you guys out a little bit on this table, this particular table. Now they have different ones, ones without wheels and different things, but you know in my uh, shop here we don't have a lot of room in here so I need to be able to move this thing out of the way when I'm not using it. And this table is going to make it very easy for me to do that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe, leave me thumbs up, thumbs down, or a comment if you'd like. And don't forget, check out the, in the description for a link for this setup, I think you guys will be very happy with this saw and the table. Till next time. Okay, I got the table all set up. I actually went over there and got a piece of rough cut. This board here is about 10 feet, close to 10 feet long. Sets in there really nice, very nice setup. I love this. And now I don't have to work off the floor. That working on the floor is just, <laughs> that's just hard on a person altogether. And I see people doing it all the time. Uh, they have these stands. Now you can get them with wheels or without wheels. And I wanted mine with wheels. As you know, the shop here is really small and I need to be able to pack things up and put it away, get it out of the way. And this is going to make it a lot easier for me, especially on my back. This saw is very heavy. So this stand's going to help me out a lot here in the shop. So I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. If you're interested in the table, or the saw. I'll leave a couple links on Amazon. Don't forget if uh, you click on one of them links, you don't have to buy what I put on there. Uh, anything you go at the top of the page, once you click on a link, go to the top uh, and if you search for something and buy it, it just helps out my channel. It doesn't affect what you pay. Uh, you still paying the same amount whether you went to Amazon and got it or got it off one of my links. It just helps out the channel. So that I do appreciate. So we'll leave a couple links in the description down below. If you guys are interested in them, check them out. I think you'll be very satisfied with this setup. Uh, I got it because we have the sawmill and all of our lumber is pretty much free and we have big lumber. So I would like to tell everyone thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me thumbs up, thumbs down, or a comment if you'd like. Until next time.